When we got here this morning, we've been told that Thorsten Lava Tube, the most famous one, is closed and it's totally flooded. Even electrical is flooded. We're like so disappointed. I think that's why we kind of started our day a little bit bummed up. But now it's open and actually going on a tour inside the lava tube. How awesome is that? Love it! So excited. Really so excited. It, and the weather looks great and it's, you can see blue sky, just totally, you know, we just decided it can get better and it did. So you know what, sometimes the weather does cooperate with you when you keep, you know, positive attitude. Let's go on the tour. Archipelago is incredibly, incredibly isolated. And the islands didn't break off from a continent. They were born from the floor of the Pacific Ocean, from volcanoes, from the sea floor all the way up. Is that phenomenal? Um, most volcanoes are on the edges of plates. You guys have heard of plate tectonics? Yeah, yeah. The Pacific plate is famous because it has so many active volcanoes on it. They call it the ring of fire. 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 Yeah. Um, in this case, we're not at the edge of a plate at all. We're actually out in the middle. So underneath us is a mantle plume burning its way through the crust. And then this is what's cool. The mantle plume appears to be relatively stationary. But what's the plate doing? Moving. 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 Two to four inches, that's seven to nine centimeters, north-northwest every year. So if you come back to see me next year, I won't be here. <laughs> I'll okay. be here. Yeah, you guys get that? So every year, literally, the islands are moving with the whole floor of the Pacific Ocean. Wow. That means over geologic time, we don't see one volcano here. We don't even see one island. We see a chain of islands, all born from here, stretching their way across the Pacific. So the only way for species to arrive before humans was one or more of the three W's. You guys know those yet? Water. Wind. Wind. Good. Water. Water or waves. They could float here. So wind, water, and? People. People. Women. <laughs> Women. Women. No, I'm kidding. That's, that was a guess I got from someone. Wind, water, and? Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. No. That's a, the other one I got was Walmart. I'm like, no. Walmart. Oh, probably kids. Probably that. Birds? No. Yeah, birds, but what do birds have? Wings. wings. Wind, water, and wings. So no doubt about it, we think pretty much the first uh, larger wildlife that actually found the Hawaiian Islands were the birds. And it makes perfect sense. These are migrating seabirds that are crossing the Pacific Ocean. They see isolated islands as a perfect place to rest. They land. Remember, I'm taking you guys back prior to humans. They land and something was missing. Now, they have food sources. Humans? These birds can hunt. There's no humans. What else is missing? Predators. Predators. There's no rats, there's no cats, no dogs, no pigs. None of those things that you see today were here. So if you're a seabirds, and I want you guys to imagine, we're a giant flock of migrating geese from North America migrating south. We get blown off by a storm. We land in Hawaii. If we were the size of the goose uh, flock right here, we're going to be looking at each other going, do you want to keep flying? Do you want to keep flying? He's going to say no. She's going to say, can we set up the chairs? And they're going to have barca loungers, drinks with umbrellas. We're going to be like, we've got it. Yeah. So if that's what takes place, if you're a heavy bodied bird like geese, over time, what are they gonna give up? Flight. flight. Uh, and they're gonna become flightless. And we see that on island ecosystems around the world. We saw it in New penguins. Zealand, we see it, yeah. Well, um, uh, actually dodos, you guys know about, we're actually on an island. Dodos and, yeah, and Hawaii. Didn't kiwis have the Kiwis same are thing? flightless. Um, Hawaii had at least five species of geese here. Four were flightless. They'd become flightless. One could still fly, and it's the only one that survived to this day. Does anybody know what its name? Nene. Nene. It's the last of our Hawaiian geese. So I thought I'd introduce you to one of the ancient seabirds. I love this one. Albatross? No, this one is Kawaekea. It's the white-tailed tropic bird. He's correct. It's in the Phaethon genus. So in this case, Kawaekea is hunting 10 to 20 miles offshore. It lives inside the erupting volcano. So when you guys are up at Jagger Museum, look out and watch for these white birds swooping through back and forth. In fact, we have a nested pair inside this crater. They form monogamous pairs and they lay only one egg a year. So very low reproduction, very long lifespan. And we see that in ancient Hawaii, long lifespans, low reproduction, because there wasn't much competition here. Um, I stopped you guys next to these because I just think they're absolutely spectacular. Uh, yeah, this is one of our native endemic ferns. And if you want to practice your Hawaiian, it's hapu'u pulu. Very good, your Hawaiian is awesome. The Hawaiian people gave it a two-part name. Hapu'u refers to the tree fern, and the trunk grows about a foot every seven to 10 years. You're standing next to some giants here, roughly 100 to 120 years old. That's pretty spectacular. The second part of the word is pulu. I'm gonna show you that a little farther down the trail. Um, pulu is the golden fur she puts out. In Hawaiian language, this was a uh, body form, a kinalau of Haumea, Pele Honoamea's mother. Um, it was said to be mother of the forest because the fern would give birth to all the other plants of the rainforest. And sometimes the trunk would grow up tall, 
fall over, the head would turn back up, right. giving it the title walking fern as it strolled through. Um, so really, if you think about it, pretty spectacular uh, ferns. And I have visitors that come with me on hikes and they go, wow, that fern looks like it's right out of Jurassic Park. And I said, yeah, that's because it's right out of Jurassic Park. Uh, these are ancient Sibodium ferns where they would have, their ancestor, you were talking about uh, DNA uh, studies, that would have come from Asia. So you guys know how the fern could have possibly gotten here from Asia? The plates, the, the, Water. the continents. We're in the middle of a plate, right? So no. Water. Water is a good guess. Uh, boats? No. no boats. Wind? Wind. Wind. In fact, the only direction the jet stream flows is straight across Hawaii from Asia, and fern spores are so microscopically tiny. So to see if this hypothesis might be correct, NOAA flew weather aircraft in the jet stream above the Hawaiian Islands, and they sent out a net, and they pulled the net back in, and it contained tiny fern spores, insects, and some little bitty seeds that were transported by the jet stream. Is that cool? It's like, wow! So we learned wind, water, and Walmart. <laughs> and uh, we learned that birds really dominated the Hawaiian Islands prior to humans' birth. So we'll head a little farther up. Watch the puddle. Unfortunately, it was the Park Service budget. So I have these cartoons. Those will be the visual. I'll be producing the audio, audio visual, and then you'll be listening in surround sound. So, does that sound good? Okay, so starting off, all the lava tubes on the island start as a surface flow going down the side of the mountain. This one that we're about to go into would have formed about 500, 550 years ago during the Isla Al flows. Kilauea looked very different then. As the lava was flowing down the side of the mountain, something like this, that's me standing here, by the way. You can see my flat hat. You're really old. I'm really old. And I'm showing you guys the lava flow is coming down the mountain. The coolest part is where it's moving very slow. It's dragging along the sides. So right there where it's dragging, is where it cools first. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's almost as though a river is freezing over. It starts to form this perch channel and the lava is going through it. What's the next coolest spot? The top, right where it's touching the air. <laughs> so sure enough, woo, it starts to crust over like that. In fact, there I am pointing. Look, it's crusting over right there. Um, eventually, that's going to connect. And as soon as it connects, it starts melting the ground in what's called thermal erosion, so it forms this unique keyhole formation shape. And you can see where the lava river is roaring through there. That's leaving behind ridges on the wall they call bathtub rings. So that's, that gives you an idea of how high the lava river was. But there's superheated gases roaring through the top, and that leaves the top part of the ceiling quite brittle. So what can happen with that brittle ceiling? Break. It can break like that. And that's called a skylight. So there I am pointing out the skylight. Look, toxic gases, don't breathe that. The sky, the lava then drains away and it leaves behind a lava tube. Does that make sense? What happens if the lava is to reoccupy the same tube? It'll remelt the ceilings and walls and do driblet spires, or in the case, some of you would think of them as lava stalactites, or in the Hawaiian language, nahukus, protuberances hanging from the ceiling. It would be like, whoops, I do it right here. Yes, this. Mm -hmm. See the little ones dripping from the ceiling? Mm -hmm. When this tube was originally opened, it had the hukus hanging from the ceiling. People would break them off and take them home as souvenirs. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So really bad because that takes away the experience for uh, children today. They don't get to see the nahukus. Um, and when the lava drained away, it leaves behind those great nahukus. And here you can see where I brought all of you in at once. Mm -hmm. And we're all touching the walls. The kids are trying to break off the nahukus. So lava comes back in like this. And then before we can make it back out, crispy critters, all of us like this. I'm sorry, that was ranger humor right there. That was to scare the children. Um, so there you go, multimedia, audio, visual, surround sound, lava tube formation. What we'll do is we'll head this way, I'll take you guys in, and we've got a pretty good sized group. There's only one spot where we'll all be able to group up, and then we'll uh, we'll do a little wrap up under there. So Let's go inside. Okay, I'm trying to film it. Give me. Giving a tour to 
someone. We already had a guided tour with the ranger, now we're doing it ourselves. Crazy, we need, we need to walk on something. Okay, Ariel, Ariel is a very cute boy. He gives people the flashlight that they... <laughs> so they can see where they're they going. It's pretty cute. <laughs> So they were Water actually, just dropped into my eye. They were actually anchored on the side. So the ranger would run in first, light the candles, or later light the torches, and then bring the visitors through. Um, today we have electric lights, but obviously with the flooding yesterday, they had to turn off this conduit right here so we don't get shocked uh, going through. Um, but I wanted to show two things to you guys. One, the line you see on the wall here. You guys see that? That's the bathtub line, which everything. was the height of the lava river when it was roaring through here about 500 years ago. Is that neat? So we're going to do it up to about chest high, actually over your head, right? Yeah. The lava mm -hmm. rivers. And then Look as the lava right cools and as the rainforest grows oh, back, those ohia lehua trees love to send their oh, roots oh, into lava oh. trees. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Ooh, and oh, then dripping it? from the roots is water and it drinks it back up. As we get towards the end of the tour, you're going to see a massive number of roots coming into the lava tube, all from the living ohia trees above it. So a lot of people get to see a forest from up above. You're getting to see a forest from underneath. Um, we found the ohia tree does this down in desert areas as well near the ocean. Oh, so like because groundwater will, um, I'm sorry, uh, water will uh, condense on the roots and the tree can drink it back up. So is that one of the remnants of the stalactite there on the top? I can't tell. That looks like a ohia roots. The, the one which is protruding out the bulging. Yeah, the, the, the ones that are far enough down, nobody could reach them to break them off, or just what we were talking about. Yeah. There's a remnants. Mm -hmm. On this island, can you imagine if you come across lava tubes like this, what kind of things could you use it for? Shelter. Shelter. It would be great if there's a hurricane, a storm going, you could get inside here and be protected from the roaring winds up above. Um, also, we found some of these were temporary shelters as people were crossing the islands. They would slip into a lava tube to sleep for the night. I think about it like the Motel 6 where the lights are never on. So, what else? Cheese. Cheese. You could store food here. Food would last longer. But in this case, Hawaiian people, it wouldn't be cheese. It would be things like fish and meat. You could wrap it in tea leaf, put it in a lava tube, and it will last much longer. So definitely food storage, definitely shelter. Anything else? Animals. You could. Um, down by the coast, we have evidence they were working pens sometimes, where right there is where people would help carve fish hooks and work. You could also get out of the hot sun in a lava tube. There's two others that are a little... Time out for the kids. <laughs> Not that I know of, yeah. Um, Guano, no, 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 only Farm? one uh, native uh, bat left in Hawaii, Opea, Opea, oh, that's the Hawaiian hori bat, and that's a forest bat. It doesn't live in the lava tube. Um, there was a study done in uh, 1983 and then recently published this year about a second species of bat that used to live in lava tubes, but it went extinct shortly after humans arrived. Okay, I'll give you guys a hint. Fortress, in time of war, they would actually fortify one of the lava tubes, and we have evidence of that over by uh, Kona, where they've got lava tubes with massive rock fortresses and weapons stored inside. So the idea was you could basically store up food and uh, stay sieged in there for a while. One of the most incredible stories, though, has to do with burial. In Native Hawaiian culture, if my dad was to pass away and I was the one in charge of preparing his body for burial, I would make sure all the meat was removed and I would take his bones because they still contain the mana, the life force. And I would carefully prepare them with kudu fiber from the ferns and then I would wrap them in kapa cloth and I would take them into a secret location in the lava tube and I would hide them away because I don't want an enemy getting hold of my father's bones and taking his mana. In uh, this park, this national park, we have several lava tubes around the national park that have human remains in them. We don't allow any tours, and we even camouflage the opening so that hikers wouldn't accidentally stumble on them. And that's out of respect for the native Hawaiian people and the native Hawaiian culture, a burial in lava tubes. So we don't encourage people to explore lava tubes on their own because that could be a burial site. And then the last really prominent use for lava tubes is dripping from the ceiling. Water. In fact, especially down in the desert regions by the coast, if you go into a lava tube, the native Hawaiian people would take ipu bowls, they're bowls made from a gourd, and they would set it right under a drip in a lava tube. And uh, this is amazing because along some of the trails, like the Alakahakai Trail, there's numerous lava tubes with those ipus inside them with the water dripping. They would bring with them their huevai, which is a gourd with a shell stopper. You screw the shell stopper in the top. In the lava tube was the ipu, 
and next to it was the top neck of a gourd cut off and inverted as a funnel. So you would put that in your huibai, you would pour the water from the bowl through the funnel into your gourd, then you would screw the top back on and leave the ipu in the lava tube for the next hiker that comes along the trail. Is that cool? I think about it like the first uh, hydroflasks, right? So as you're crossing the island, you could just pop into a lava tube and get your water filled back up. I think that's great. So I'm going to end the hike at uh, this spot, and then right up at the end, the uh, exit of the tube, we'll say our goodbyes together. But I wanted to leave you guys with something. All on the hike today, we were talking about how Kilauea is changing constantly, the 1959 eruption, the rainforest that got wiped out uh, as humans introduced species, and it was really devastating, the massive recovery you guys are seeing now, where we heard the birds, we saw the honey creepers, we saw the ferns standing back up, blooming flowers all coming back into the park. And then uh, beautiful treasures like this, the Nahuku Thurston Lava Tube site, with the cultural connections for Hawaiian people. I thought no better way to end our hike today than for you guys to hear the Hawaiian language and then maybe maybe to listen to some Hawaiian music in the acoustics of this lava tube. Is that cool? Ooh, yeah. Ooh I love it. So I'm gonna turn off my light. Um, nose flute. It's not played with my mouth. It's actually played with one oh, nostril. Oh, okay. And it works yeah, perfectly in this in this tube system. So please enjoy the uh, enjoy the chant and enjoy the music. Eko mako makua. Iloko kalani, mahalo no ke ia, la mai kai. Oyo, e makualani. Oyo, kagaya ona. Oyo, e kuma ola, kamea hana i na mea akau. E ku haku, kamauna, kie kie. Oyo, e kuma mai kia kua, e kuma mai. Ko mai kai, na mea akau. Thank you so much. Okay, after a long day in yeah. the yeah, we tried volcano, to yeah. volcano National, Park. National Park, and we tried to see the eruption at night, but unfortunately, the lava um, lake went even lower, and then it will become so foggy, so foggy that we couldn't see anything. Like we'd see some red, red flames, and then fog like literally came, came in and, and it, it covered everything. everything. So, so anyway, we decided them for dinner. Yeah, so we're going to LNL, LNL, LNL uh, dinner, and then it's a bit different the menu that on the other side. So yeah, mm. so we're going to eat. We're going to eat. Okay, Ariel eats his hamburger, deluxe with the vegetables, and Regina found her, her found my soup. Uh, or one ton noodle soup with pork, chicken, and shrimp, and there are also dumplings in here. Mm -hmm. It's just very hot. <laughs> oh. It will be a while. Yeah. Um, the dumpling? Mm -hmm. No, 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 dumpling. They're noodle dumpling. Outside noodle, not uh, dumpling dough. It's nice. It's very nice, so yeah. And I order my own uh, dumpling soup. <coughs> yeah. We enjoy the soup so very much. The soup is amazing. Even Ariel now is drinking a bit of a soup. Which is, doesn't always happen, although it's pretty adventurous either, but with soup sometimes it's kind of cautious because it doesn't know what to expect with flavor. Right, sweetie pie? But no, look at this Yeah, like joy. with dry food, I can usually bring it home and change it to how I like it, but with um, soup, it's kind of hard to do it. it. One wrong move, and it's gross, and you can't change it. Yeah, and Ariel, and this is, I, lo I know why he loves soup. This is, um, there is cinnamon and star anise in this soup, and he loves both ah. of those. That would explain yeah. it. Yes, yeah, so we're going to say bye bye to you, and hopefully, you enjoyed another day with us in uh, paradise. Yeah. Today, the weather was awesome, it was actually hot.
We really enjoyed it. It turned out to be a great, great day. Oh, yeah. So you know, sometimes if it's a little bit crooked start to the day, that's okay. We haven't seen the eruption at night of the volcano, but we'll it's work on okay. it. We still have time. But we were able to go in the lava tube. Exactly. At least they opened the lava tube. They actually opened it for like three hours. So we actually made it just perfectly. Because in the morning it sounded like it's going to be flooded forever and they never let us in. <laughs> so we're like, mm. but it's all good. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed our day. And don't forget to subscribe, let us a comment, thumbs up, us in cheers, love and life, and we'll see you tomorrow. And make sure to go towards your joy and even if you have a cookie, schmooky. Morning, morning. Like we did. And it started with a, it started nice, then we had pouring rain on the way when, and, and as we entered the Volcano National Park, it was pouring. But then it just all switched yeah, around. So said, you know what? He said it was gonna be like that all week. Yeah, and it totally ha. turned out to be a beautiful sunny day. So, yep. Oh, there's always a hope in the end of the tunnel. Yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 She's sleeping. <laughs>